Hi, this is Tim Sanders, founder of the Omnia Radiation Balancer, and I'm honored to have been a guest on the Journey to Truth show. Now with phone radiation, most people think that because they can't feel anything, nothing is happening. But the reality is that this radiation is causing a lot of stress and damage in your body, and your brain doesn't register that it's happening. The likelihood is that you'll only find out about it when this continuous stress shows up in the body as disease. And this is backed up by well over 10,000 peer-reviewed studies showing that EMF causes serious diseases when they tested it on rats. The Omnia Radiation Balancer removes this stress. It's proven to balance the blood, it brings perfect crystalline structure to water, and our kinesiology muscle tests show that the body goes super strong when you stuck it on your phone. And it works with 5G. You just order enough patches to cover every radiating device in your home and you're done. It lasts forever. But to be clear, let's not get complacent. We must all stop 5G together. So big thanks and big love to Tyler and Aaron. Click on the link below and you can quickly and permanently bring balance back to your body. Thank you. Hey, you're listening to Journey to Truth podcast. Tonight we have on John D'Souza, who most people know is a former FBI special agent. He's an author. He is uh, author of Clear Hearers, Extra Dimensionals, and Para Investigators. Is that correct? That is correct. That's well correct. Done. Unfortunately, I have not had a chance to read them, although uh, I've heard people talk about them and they seem pretty amazing. I have Extra Dimensionals and I've read it and it's very, very good. Oh, thanks, man. Awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. There you go. It's great to be on here with you on Journey to Truth podcast with you guys with Tyler and Aaron. This is awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. thanks. As I call you, as I call you, A.A. Ron. A.A. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, yes. Yeah. I get that a lot. That's, yes. That's awesome. <laughs> and it's my understanding, so just for the people who don't know, the whole X-Files thing, so specifically some of the cases you investigated with your time during the FBI were used during the first season of the X-Files, correct? That's correct. And that came to a screeching halt because the FBI brass ended up uh, calling the creator, uh, Chris Carter, and uh, kind of calling him on the carpet for finding out where was he getting his material from and what was going on. And he talks about that today, and he says that he felt like they were going to shut him down. I guess they were kind of... They, I'm sure they were very kind of threatening. And, um, and they also uh, interviewed me as well with that same uh, threatening attitude. Really? And, uh, I, and I told them I had nothing to do with any material going over to, to uh, them to, at that time, uh, that it was just, it was my material that was taken uh, and it didn't, it didn't have anything to do with me. So you know, they kind of, Chris Carter asked them, specifically what episodes are they talking about and we can look into you know finding out more about where the information came from they weren't and i asked them the same thing they weren't willing to uh specific give more specifics than that so they kind of called it a draw and uh everybody returned to their corners and and chris carter kept on making the x-files and i don't think it was as good after the first season it wasn't uh, no the after first that. <laughs> by far the best yeah cool yeah for sure and i agree so you left the FBI shortly after Comey came into the FBI. Is that, yeah, is that correct? That's correct. It was about, uh, actually, it was about like 30 days later I was out uh, because I was, uh, I was aware of who he was at the time he was appointed. He was appointed by the uh, renegade cartel uh, that took over the presidency over there um, here in the United States. Uh, and most people know who that is. And that individual renegade uh, appointed this guy uh, to be in charge of the FBI, who it was, it was very well known. It was very well known who he was and what he'd been doing in the previous 20 years. Uh, he'd been doing uh, uh, pretty bad things uh, for another criminal cartel, the uh, Clinton, the Clinton criminal cartel. Well, there you go. And that's what he'd been up to. And that was his job. That was his full time job in government uh, during the previous period. And this was not a secret. This was pretty easy to find out. All you had to do is do a quick, uh, well, not quick, but do a simple um, Internet search uh, as to all the places that he had been 
previously and, and what what happened in all those places where he had been uh, yeah and ironically you'd think people in the fbi would uh would all be up to speed on right, right. <laughs> what he's about right. Right? and they and they knew that i mean if nothing else i told them i told them i made them aware and many others also made them aware Mm -hmm. uh, but there was nothing they could do. I mean, it was Renegade wanted him in charge of the FBI. And that's that. That, was, that yeah. was all there was. So I figured I figured at that time I had been in for 25 years. So it was probably a good time to get out at that time. You, yeah, 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 definitely. And you made the right choice. And, and at that point, there's the, the plan was already in motion. So there's not much exactly. done. Exactly. Exactly. The plan was already in motion. That's a good way of putting it, because that also applies to the first thing I wanted to talk about tonight, which was what I'm wearing, my shirt. Yeah. I was going to segue into that next. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. Go yeah. do it. <laughs> so I noticed you're wearing a Q shirt. No. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. And uh, yeah, I was, I was hoping you guys would be wearing your Q shirts tonight too, but but we're good. You got Q in your heart. So I think we're good with that. And everybody I'll put a Q on my shirt and post. So I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, here's um, people who watch me always want to they want to hear some sort of uh, they always want to hear some new material and some kind of inside baseball. So I have it for them tonight. Uh, I have it for them tonight, especially regarding uh, Q. Uh, and here's what it is. In speaking of renegade administration, the renegade. Uh, cartel that was in charge of the United States at that time in 2015. And this is, this is mostly what I've gotten from my sources. In 2015, there was this great, uh, there was this great uh, general, uh, this great general working in government, and he had been in many different posts. He was mostly, and this is renegade administration, uh, already uh, despised him because he was a great terrorism fighter, a jihad fighter throughout the government. And he was known for that. He was a great counterterrorism organizer for the government. And, uh, and, and he fought against uh, jihad uh, throughout the world. And uh, his name was General Flynn. And he was, uh, at this time, he's also had another specialty. His other specialty was information warfare. Okay, information warfare. So, uh, which means a lot of different things, but I mean, it means what it says it is. And he wrote many, he wrote many white papers, he wrote many policy papers on this stuff. And in 2015, he seemed, he was, it was really strange. He was like a, uh, he was a lot like the, the Pope, uh, one of the old popes uh, uh, authorizing, authorizing a crusade. The crusade, because what he did was he went uh, to one event and he started talking about that he was going to, well, that he was going to launch, authorize an army of digital soldiers across the world to do the work, do the patriotic work for America, uh, for America. And this is, this is an interpretation, but I think it's a correct interpretation uh, as to what he was really doing. And he basically authorized this crusade that involved you guys and me and all of us, uh, an army, and as, as he said, an army of digital soldiers that would be out there like Minutemen, that would be out there uh, defending the values of the United States. Many of them would be, he, as he called it, anonymous. Many of them would be anonymous, but some of them would not. Some of them would be under their own names like you guys now. And, but we would all be involved in the same crusade, the same crusade to defend this nation, to fight against the forces of evil and darkness. And at that time, not too many people knew what he was talking about in 2015 when it was happening. Not too many people knew, but there was one group that knew, and it was, it was the renegade administration. They knew what he was talking about. Oh, and yeah. they knew, and they knew also that because they have source, they had the sources to a lot of um, all the information sources from all the different places uh, at that time. So they knew he was cooking up something. He was cooking up something called 
the Q movement, for lack of a better term. As a matter of fact, they thought that he himself was going to be Q. That's really? what they, they believed that. And again, this is all stuff that's coming to me after the fact that uh, people in government are telling me this is what happened. Um, and so they believed that he personally was going to be whatever this Q thing is. And so because of that, they targeted him for annihilation. The cabal and the deep state and their minions in the, uh, in the uh, renegade administration targeted him for complete destruction, okay? They did um, what's one of these things that's called a, a die operation, which is done often against uh, the enemies of the deep state. Uh, it's, it's called a die information, a, a die operation, which means defame, investigate, and expurgate, uh, which just means these are the steps they take to take somebody down who has a, who has a tremendous, a great reputation, who's a person of integrity, and they have to, they have to come up with nonsense against them, and then they have to attack, uh, accuse, and then get rid of them. And so that is why uh, that is why General Flynn was targeted by the deep state, by the cabal, by all of these uh, all of these uh, uh, renegade minions. And they were in a big hurry too because they did a sloppy operation. They did a sloppy operation. They did all kinds of uh, all kinds of shenanigans, all kinds of uh, uh, illegal things as well against him, noted again. And not only that. They also took down people around him who were his sympathizers and his allies. They took down people who, uh, again, they ran these die operations against them uh, and, just, and just took down a bunch of people. Uh, one of these, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys uh, some names of some of these individuals offline uh, to see if, if, they, if you want to um, talk to them and interview them after the yeah. fact. But, yeah but, there, yeah, but there were people, because General Flynn was even in a liaison position where he was, where he was kind of a go-between uh, between the CIA, uh, the FBI, the Pentagon. And so because of that, he had people, agents from all those agencies who were his supporters, who were his supporters. And they were also targeted by the deep state in these different agencies, in the FBI, in the CIA, and at, uh, at the Pentagon, people who were his his undying supporters, they were targeted and they were taken down too. And it was with crazy claims and stuff that just like made no sense. And because this cartel that was determined to stop this from coming into being, they were absolutely, they were commanded. They were commanded by the cabal. We cannot allow this to come into existence. We've got to stop it before it happens. It's their and worst nightmare. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But only the cabal knew that at this time. Even even the minions, even the minions at uh, in the Obama administration, even they didn't know why we were taken down. Really? Uh, General Flynn. They didn't know. They just knew they were ordered to do it. But they didn't really know about uh, what, what Q was all about, that uh, this operation was being put together, and what it would really mean. They had no clue but yeah. they were just carrying out their orders. They're, and they were using a lot of um, illegal means, which are going to be exposed now uh, with General Flynn, now with the maestro. Now that the maestro is in charge and the maestro yeah. being uh, President Donald Trump. And uh, we're going to see a lot of good results on that. Yeah, yes. and, and that's a common trend with a lot of the attacks we're seeing on... A lot of people, they don't just attack the person. They attack everyone around them. Uh, that's, that's just kind of their game plan, their go-to plan for uh, anybody who's trying to expose their criminal acts. So exactly. it, that's just – when you see that happening, you immediately know well, when you red see, flag. Yeah, yeah, and when you see, like, all these people all at the same time suddenly all start – saying the same things mm -hmm. it's like this very obvious coordinated effort that gets activated and yeah like it it's it, it's just very very obvious to me that it's not a natural occurring like oh all these people just suddenly had an awakening and 
decided right. they want right. to uh, speak the truth about this. No, it's like a very right. coordinated effort. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And that's always, it's like uh, in the FBI, we always used to say, it's not the crime that gets them. It's the cover up afterward that always gets them. Yeah. And, and this is, this is cover up uh, what you're talking about. Like, like uh, by the media, by the mainstream media. Yeah. Like when we, when we see all these stories, all these stories that use the exact same wording. Uh, today, the yeah. well-known conspiracy theory called Q uh, is a... Bizarre is a, conspiracy. They all say bizarre. Is, like, is a bizarre cult-like uh, collection of people who are, you know, who are this and that and who believe that. Da, 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 da. And so uh, they Q is pushing crazy theories like, and then they'll name like the craziest well, thing. You can perfect, exa- yeah. perfect example. So. Uh, PGA golfer Scott Piercy, a friend of mine, just made me aware of this. Lost three of his sponsors because he tweeted something that was Q related. They went into his Twitter feed and, or no, he didn't tweet it. He posted something on Instagram that was Q related. Then they went back into some of his other posts and and finally just came to the conclusion that he believed in Q. And three of his sponsors dropped him. And this was like two days ago. So that's a perfect example. There, yeah, I mean, there's been other, I've, there was like a police officer that got um, relieved of duty because he had a Q patch on or something. I remember once. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah and there's, yeah, there's multiple examples that I've even seen of that well, where it's I, like, it's like that- they've created this narrative that they push out there that Q is a dangerous like hate group or something like some kind of <laughs> at, at, at like worse than that best it's a crazy right wing conspiracy like they like to push that right wing term to really yeah. Oh, yeah. off anyone that doesn't want to be associated with right wing and and yeah. oh it's crazy only crazy people believe in this and yeah um yeah it's just all kinds of slanderous just things that there's nothing backing them up other than the media and everything that's, that's it, yeah. putting it out there yeah Absolutely. But anyone that studies, uh, studies the Q drops, uh, whether they're on AQ or whether they study them uh, with uh, all the great interpreters that are uh, on YouTube and other places as well. Uh, anybody who studies those drops knows that those of us who are Q, uh, Q followers, uh, we, we, we know the future. We know what's going to happen before it happens. And only we know. And why is that? Because we know that Q is nothing more is nothing more than a military intelligence communication group. That's all they are. And they're just putting out military intel out there because we are in a war mm-hmm. on, in this nation and all across the globe. We're in a war. And it's the forces of darkness, the cabal that is pursuing, pursuing uh, to establish, reestablish its power over all the nations especially the United States, of course, uh, and, and, the, and the alliance, the alliance of the light that is being spearheaded uh, by President Donald Trump. There's no other way to say it because he is. He is, he is the spear tip in this, in this allied group that is fighting, that is fighting against these dark cabal forces, the deep state, and all their little subsidiaries, all of their minions that are trying to destroy us. Which is why they've also they've also been attacking him so heavily since he's been in office, and actually before he's been in office, they um, well the whole campaign was attacked. The whole, yeah, well they've the been election. They were yeah. he they they were spying on him well before he was ever president. Um, they had this the fake steel dossier created that was obviously fake. Yeah, um, and obviously they they knew they had to throw something together quickly like you said they did a sloppy job with it because they were rushing it and um it turned out it was like it was a um something else that they just like slapped his name on or something yeah and right. uh, changed some of the names and they're like all right this is yeah, look at, this was, is real <laughs> it was written like in the washington post like years earlier and yeah they, they switched the names up they just used it same thing for yeah. trump um yeah, and then the whole Russia hoax, the whole Russia, they've been, you know, ever since he's been in office hammering him as 
working with Russia and all these ridiculous claims that have nothing, nothing backing them up at all. But they're like sure. just pushing and pushing and pushing it on all through the mainstream media mostly. And well, what do you think about the like? So the Russia, uh, the Russia probe didn't work, and yeah, they yeah. came out like, nope, there's nothing here. Yeah, and like they, this is so all they, they've had many things they've tried, and they're not working now. They're up, now they're up to the coronavirus, which is uh, what are your thoughts and on all that? False flags, yeah. You know, on the um, on the Russia uh, thing, uh, um, the whole Russia thing that was continuing for I guess like three years. Yeah, I guess like three yeah. years. Yeah. Uh, that. That was, and this is the most incredibly dangerous part of this, of this uh, Russia hoax, is that the, uh, the evil queen who was trying to come into her throne over the United States, uh, she had, and if you listen, if you go back and listen to her speeches, you'll see that what I'm saying is true. She had been given orders from the cabal, from her masters, that her first agenda when she came into office, when, when Hillary, I don't know what I said, uh, when she came into office, her first agenda was to get the United States into a nuclear war against Russia. That was her number one agenda. And if you go back and listen to some of her speeches, you'll see that what I'm saying is true. She was brewing up some incredible hatred towards Russia and some kind of um, what we call paranoia. Uh, against Russia, and that was going to be her first order of business to do that. And they never thought she would lose. So they, um, however, however, their um, their their first priority, that first foreign policy priority, to get us into a, a war against Russia. And the, one of the main reasons that that was number one priority for the cabal was because it was the only thing that they could. It was the last thing they could think of to try to really reduce the power of the United States was mm. to get us into a crazy, into a nuclear war with World War Russia. III. Exactly. Yeah. It was the only way they could really think of to like just really do something to just level the United States power and just make them just one more, like one more European power that's just running around taking orders from them. And, and so that's why that has, that is, and has also, it's even remained a policy a goal for the cabal. Uh, and that's why you still see, even after she lost, you still see all of these Russia machinations going on where they're trying to whip up hysteria and fear and fervor against uh, Russia. And of course, the other reason, well, the other reason for it also, because whenever the cabal does something, there's always layers. Of yeah. It's not, it's never just one set of reasons. One. Another, another big reason for that, for that, also, is not just to reduce the power of the United States and the Russians probably also, but it's because because Putin is the most who is leader for life in Russia. Uh, he is probably the single, or maybe maybe the second most hated man on the earth by the cabal. And the reason is you guys probably know because he's one of the only he's one of the only major powers. That has kept out the central banks from Russia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. You, guys, you guys know about that. That is the ultimate, the ultimate thing, no no, that you never do when, if you're a prime minister or a president uh, to the cabal, keeping their central banks. That's how, out they, of your, that's how they uh, control the country. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And, and, so, and so they absolutely despise Putin uh, and they want him destroyed. At any cost, that's a huge priority for them. Uh, probably the only other person that they hate more than um, than Putin is uh, the leader of um, the last remaining dictator of uh, what's his name, Syria, uh, Assad. Assad. Oh yeah, Assad, yeah. yeah. I yeah. thought you were going to say Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, well, yeah, of course Trump. Trump. Yeah. Trump's probably actually Trump's probably number one. Trump, Trump's yeah. probably number one actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But number two is definitely Putin. And then number three is Assad in Syria, because Assad also, like all those Syrian Middle East dictators, I don't mean to go into history lessons here, but but all those Middle Eastern dictators from like, uh, I think it's like from 10 years ago, or, or maybe it was 20, with the Arab Spring that supposedly was created 
uh, because people wanted democracy in their nations. All of those Middle Eastern dictators were overthrown because, simply because, and along with Gaddafi and others as well, and the Egypt's Hosni Mubarak and many others, all of them were overthrown for the same reason, because they told, they kept the cabal's central banks out of their nations, and they were at, they all went to a fractional gold reserve dinar, dinar as their basis of their money. Another big global no-no that you can never do, because those Middle Eastern dictators thought we're so powerful, we're dynasties. Nobody's going to come in here and overthrow us. And the cabal did it. They had, they organized, they used the CIA, they organized this fake Arab Spring that supposedly was from the people to overthrow those dictators. And they overthrew all of them. They overthrew all of them, one after the other. And even go up to and including Muammar Gaddafi, who was doing the same thing with his money that the other dictators were doing as well. And the only one that they couldn't get was the one they wanted the most, and that was Assad. They weren't, and to this day, they haven't been able to get Assad because he's just, Assad is just too smart, and he prepared for this contingency because he knew what the globalists, what the cabal was going to do. Yeah, so, and you notice they tried to demonize him as well, so oh, all, all, three, all three of those people, they've tried to demonize in the media as being and, a terrible dictator, and they try to call Trump like a dictator, you know, and, say, mm-hmm. and when you, but when you just ignore what they're saying and look at what they actually do it's quite the opposite yeah so and, and that's why the mainstream media has no credibility whatsoever none. and how but the but the sad thing is we have just seen demonstrated the the one final power that they still have even though as an institution they're on their way out but the one power that they still have is to create fear to create panic and they're doing it with this right uh, coronavirus uh, Along, along with the Democratic Party, they're spreading fear everywhere and trying to get a panic because they're trying to hurt the American economy. That's it. And, and, it's, and it's worked. It's yeah. worked because they still have that ability, unfortunately, because of some well, people are still paying attention. Do you think, yeah. do you think uh, the Alliance can uh, take advantage of this situation and use this as fuel for a financial reset? If, yeah. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, that's funny that you would say that because uh, today uh, Trump announced that because because of the coronavirus panic and the, and the harm to our economy that's been going on, uh, he is going to take some emergency financial, uh, some kind of emergency financial re- uh, relief measures for average Americans. Uh, stuff that really? stuff that the globalists will be very unhappy with, and I was, and he may be on he may be on television announcing it, what it is right now. He was kind of hinting that it may be emergency tax relief. Uh, he was saying that he may just do a, a retroactive cut in payroll tax for the previous year. So if you haven't filed your taxes yet, uh, he may be just slashing slashing what you're paying for taxes for the year just it's crazy stuff it's yeah. crazy stuff but we'll we'll see we'll see um what's well, going to happen with that i mean i do believe there is a financial reset looming and uh like yeah did you see what happened in italy right now yesterday uh no no what happened enlighten us the the economic minister in italy just announced that they are, and I don't know how this works, but he said that they are, uh, they have ordered a, a nationwide quarantine for people to stay home from work. Oh, so I, did. I did hear about that as well. Actually. So, so therefore, they are freezing people's mortgages, paying really? on their mortgages where they don't have to pay and they will suffer no, uh, no repercussions from not paying uh, on the well, mortgage. Yeah, because if you can't go to work, you can't <laughs> right. make money, you can't pay your mortgage. Man, it's, right. it but look, what's, look yeah. what's happening. It's happening. Like, this is huge. This is big stuff. This is yeah. what we've been talking about for yeah, years there's now. there's so much happening right now. And it's, also, with the, with the coronavirus, did you see that building, the hotel in China that collapsed in on its own footprint? 
It was a hotel. Oh. It was a hotel that where they were housing all the coronavirus victims, like mm-hmm. a three-story hotel. And it just miraculously collapsed in on its own footprint. Controlled demolition yeah, style. Exactly. Wow. Collapsed. And yeah. and uh, I haven't looked into it, but it's just immediately fishy. I mean. Like building seven. Just collapsed yeah. in its own yeah. footprint for no reason. For no, no reason. Room. Didn't get hit by a plane. <laughs> just Amazing. Just, yeah. Amazing. Uh, yeah. So, they, you yeah. know. But those- it's like that's how desperate they're, you know, just – well, China is like also because we talk about the cabal, but it seems like China's kind of its own cabal. Uh, they're kind of like their own, like like uh, Edge of Wonders talked about. They're their own deep right. state. They're just exactly. uh, they're just kind of like a separate thing. Yeah, um, it seems like it seems that way. And yeah, also, yeah. also China, I believe, and I I, be, I think that Trump believes also that uh, China has uh, sections that are firmly with the cabal. But it also has sections okay. that are trying to work with the alliance, like okay. um, like uh, President Z. They're they're saying yeah, um, yeah Z is that there's a lot of talk that President Z wants to work with Trump and wants to wants to work with him, but he has military elements that he doesn't quite control that are also you know hardliners that are on the other side working for the cabal. And he has to deal with. It. You know, so yeah, that's yeah. that's the situation. Is China is so large? It's so it is big and diverse. Is. So that's how one point four billion. People. So uh, jumping. Uh, so do you have any insider information on the coronavirus? That, because a lot of people are worried about it. There is this fear. Is there anything that some of our listeners are listening to who are afraid right now? Because people I would expect would think it's a conspiracy or like really scared mm-hmm. right now. So I'm just curious what okay. you can tell them. Well, the most, I can tell you the most basic information that I got when this thing was, even before it was starting was, I mean, I had some people who had some knowledge who were telling me, this is, this is it. They got the, uh, this is going to be the apocalyptic uh, virus. It's going to, it's going to kill somebody. It's going to kill a lot of people and it's being released and it's being released by on purpose uh, by the cabal, uh, but that was very preliminary information that I got. As time went on, and after it launched, after it launched, and I use that word very advisedly, after it was launched, I was told this was a bioweapon uh, that was that was weaponized uh, from a virus, and it was weaponized. And I don't. I'm just saying this is the info I got. It was weaponized to bind, because this is what they found. They found that the viruses are more deadly when they're used as bioweapons if they're used to bind to a certain type of ethnic group, a certain type of ethnic group, and it creates a higher mortality that way, but only among that ethnic group. And I, and I was told it was targeted towards Asians and Chinese. Mm. And so... For that reason, they believed that there was cooperation from the cooperation from certain elements of the Chinese who are who are truthfully always looking for depopulation possibilities in their own nation. That's they don't see that as a bad thing, you know. So it's possible that cabal elements in uh, China were very happy to welcome in this this agent, this this weaponized bioweapon. Uh, and so they were able to bring that in and target it in China. But it was always meant to spread to non-Asians as well. But, but it's, a, it's a mutating thing. And for some reason, it breaks apart. It still carries the markers of corona, but it breaks apart in its, uh, in its deadly quality when it is passed over to uh, non asian This is what I was told by people who are scientific uh, personnel. Uh, and they and so it becomes kind of like it becomes kind of like the regular flu yeah. when it's given over to non-Asians when it passes over to non-Asian still carries the markers of the corona but but it becomes but it's not lethal you no. see so and that and then as I was watching the reporting the corroborating evidence that I got for that is that if you look at all the reporting they won't release they won't say the names they won't. of the people who are being infected being infected but more than being infected the ones who actually die 
the ones who are actually dying. Because these people have been, their next of kin have been notified. There's no reason why you can't release the names. But it's like, um, but they won't do it. And so for me, that helps to confirm that they don't want us to know the ethnic background, the race of the people who are dying. Because I think it's going to, I think it's going to result in information that by far, by far the most people who are, who have deadly consequences with this, with this Corona stuff are of an Asian background. Yeah. You well, know, and, and we've heard. want to know that. Yeah. yeah. And we've heard this directly. Uh, uh, Corey Good said in his old Cosmic Disclosure episodes, they would, they would do these tests on underground cities and they yeah. would, they would attack specific ethnic, that group, then. ethnic groups yeah. this was years ago you know mm-hmm. they've been testing this stuff for a long time and he said yeah. it is effective they, they it can, works better it they works can, better they that way improve. yeah for some reason and i don't I'm, I'm not a scientist i don't know why but it seems like it, it does work better and also i was told that uh the cabal is very happy with the success after you know three years of the russian nonsense that they had that got them nowhere and all the other things they've tried against, uh, against Trump and against the American economy, nothing has worked. Nothing has worked until now. They're so happy with this that it's, this thing is probably going to peter out by, like, by the end of this month. It's pretty much going to peter out. But they're so happy with it. They have other bioweapons ready. And instead of releasing them every four years or every eight years on election cycles like they've been doing, in the past, uh, they're going to start releasing these like every every few months. And the next one, I was told that the next one is going to be against Indians, as in India, 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 oh. and people of Indian extraction, uh, even here in the United States. I was told that's the next big one that's being released. And I think, and as I, and as I, and I'm thinking that's that's probably true because. The way that I saw uh, Trump welcomed over in India recently by the prime minister, the, yeah. guy, the guy was so happy to see Trump. And Trump even said, I am bringing some information to the Indian prime minister on this coronavirus and its future implications. He actually said those words. Really? So I think, I think Trump knows something about the next attack, the next bioweapon that's going to be going down, which is possibly going to be against uh, possibly going to be against India and and Americans of Indian extraction as well. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's what we're looking at. That's great info. Uh, <laughs> that's can't wait till they're not able to do this stuff anymore, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like but well, it's just their last this is their last like their last um, stand, yeah. Death oh, absolutely. The cabal. Absolutely. And they are and they are desperate with um, something like this that can be that can be pretty easily traced to the laboratories and the things where they develop these things, uh, and I believe they uh, they have traced uh, this one as well because we had a whole bunch of we had a bunch of scientists that were arrested were arrested over at I believe it was Harvard I believe it was the Harvard laboratories and yeah. they were arrested and a bunch of biological material was seized. And there's a the story is out there floating around, uh, but there hasn't been any more information on that. What do you think of the theory that we hear going around about a 5G tower being flipped on in Wuhan that weakens the immune system to make them even more susceptible to this virus? Do you think that it's being used hand in hand or is that just an out there theory? No, I, I think it's very possible that just the 5G out there was used because, mm. uh, but overall, 5G in the, in the system, I believe that Q told us, I'm, I'm pretty sure Q did a drop on 5G saying that the allies allies have taken back 5G. So it's, yeah, it can't, I remember that. Yeah, so it can't be used against the people, and now it's going to be used for our benefit. Uh, but it's very possible that an, an array uh, in Wuhan, like you said, uh, could have been taken and weaponized against uh, against the people over there. That that could happen very easily. All yeah. you need is a bunch of all you need is a, is a group of corrupt scientists to, to get it done for you. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. think I read that like the five G tower was flipped on 
like eight miles away from the first outbreak of the coronavirus, like the oh. same day. I don't know if that's valid, but it's just, you know, what it is. Uh, so going yeah. back, going back to Q, all these CEO resignations that we're seeing right now, uh, you know, like you said, we know the future, all the Q, all the Q to Q army knows the future. So we knew this had been a long time coming and we're seeing exactly. it every day. And what do you think the reason is? I think these people are, are they're, involved in these criminal acts and they're stepping down instead of having to face public humility is that what's happening no uh you can still you can still it, it's a it's like a it's almost like a legal trick that goes on I'm, I'm i've been an attorney for a long time and i see this kind of thing and also as an fbi agent i've seen this kind of thing when you have a when you have a ceo that is in charge of a company uh if he gets if he gets indicted uh, one day while, while he's still with the company, uh, it's a world of difference if he gets indicted uh, the moment, one day after he steps out of the company. It's a world of difference because it gives, the indictment will give access, if he's still in the company, the indictment will give access to all the company's records into that criminal investigation. And it'll give access to everything that's gone on in that company, you see? And so, so what happens is these companies find out, well, the boards find out, the boards of directors, they find out that this indictment is coming. And so they say to this, the CEO, you gotta step out, you gotta step out right now uh, because if you get indicted while you're still with us, uh, then all of our books are gonna be open. And we can't afford that because, uh, and the books can, you know, the books can still be opened through a separate, you know, criminal investigation, but it just makes it a lot easier if the CEO is still there while he gets indicted. See, that's, so that's why you see all of these, yeah, all of these indictments, oh, sorry, all of these uh, CEOs all step out at the same time and say, okay, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And then uh, they can negotiate, you know, the indictments and how that's going to go down. And there's companies are going to be subject through them to all the scrutiny that uh, that happens. In these well, look cases. look at all the big name companies we've seen. You know, Disney, Mastercard, yeah. T-Mobile, IBM, right. Harley Davidson. Right. Uh, there's a whole list of them. I mean, what company can you trust? What's what's really right. going on? This is a right. this is a worldwide. Uh, you know, problem. Yeah, yeah, because the uh, cabal and the deep state, uh, they have compromised so many institutions into their criminality, into the things that they have done. I mean, can you can you imagine if uh, if uh, the uh, CEO of uh, of Disney, or as an example, gets uh, indicted for something to do with trafficking, trafficking, human trafficking? And then that would open, and he's still not resigned. He's still with the company. That then would open up the company Disney to what are their policies with trafficking, with human trafficking? How, what involvement do they have as a company with human trafficking all around the world? And what connections do they have to it? Uh, and that it would be unthinkable, unthinkable for them to open themselves up to that sort of thing. And that's um, that's the, the sorts of things that can happen if uh, if they didn't have these resignations going down. Yeah, I think that's going to shock a lot of people. The whole Disney thing. I mean, it, the, it's all been hidden in plain sight for years, but yeah, I still see. Well, a lot of these yeah. companies, like Disney, Walt Disney was a was a Freemason apparently, um, and that you know that in and of itself doesn't mean necessarily that you're you're involved in anything negative or with the cabal but it they've like you said they infiltrate they're master infiltrators right they infiltrate everything and the cabal a long time ago seemed to have infiltrated freemasonry and all these secret societies because it it's very easy to operate secretly through and and create this web which is what they've done and uh so when you see a company that's like founded on uh, with like those type of people, it's kind of a red flag. And then when you look at um, 
a lot of the history and the things that they've done, it's, it becomes very obvious. And Disney is very much, very much one of those companies, unfortunately, when you, when you dig into them and their history. Yeah. Um, I just read an article, uh, just from NBC news. It said between November, 2018 and November, 2019, over 1300 CEOs stepped down 1300. And, <clears throat> and that was as of November, 2019. So how many have, we stepped down since then so uh we know when are these people gonna be indicted that's the thing or when are we gonna see these arrests yeah and if i could if i could address that for a moment um the uh, and i would like i would like people to uh go to my website uh john tamil books and uh check out my book uh the power investigators because I talk in that book, I talk about a lot of the, the history of the cabal and who they are and what they have, what they have created, what they've done and what they are responsible for. And here's the thing. The uh, cabal is the, uh, of course, it's the uh, bloodlines, the many bloodlines mm -hmm. that have dominated this planet for thousands of years through the nations, of course, the nations who have been their obedient uh, they're obedient uh, vassals, let me put it that way. And so I have a lot of, of course, we, we all have a lot of patriot friends who are, who even uh, believe, in, believe in Q, in Q's information and so forth, but they all have the same frustration, like what's taking so long? Why is this being slow walked so far? Why, why is the, is the CCC, why is the Clinton criminal cabal still walking around free? Why is the renegade uh, cabal still walking around free? All these other bad actors that have committed so many crimes, why are they all walking around free? So, uh, and so, and the answer is because we are at a moment of transition. We are at a moment of transition that is so massive that it hasn't been seen since the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Uh, and what happens is when you have, when you're at a period of huge transition where these old elites that have been in charge of our institutions, draining them of value for so long, uh, draining our money of value, draining our labor of value, uh, drain, draining everything of value and looting, looting the planet, basically. Mm -hmm. um, what happens is, and this is something we found out when, when Rome fell, when the Western Roman Empire fell, is that if you, don't, if you do this too quickly, if you do this, this period of transition too quickly, uh, it, will, it overthrows all the institutions you have in place. It, the institutions will just, things that you think will be there forever, they can be overthrown, they can be gone, they can be destroyed. And then you get in all the barbarian hordes that then take over everything. Uh, and this, we found that out in the, in the Roman Empire, when the Western Roman Empire was overthrown. And then the, the Visigoths and the Goths and, and the Franks and all the different tribes you know, came in and Europe, especially Europe, went into the Dark Ages because there were no institutions to protect the people. Imagine uh, walking out your front door and uh, every day, the blood of the crypts get to decide whether you live or die because all the institutions are gone. And the people in the alliance, uh, the men and women in the alliance, they are historians. They know history. And they know that this is a possibility, even though, you know, we can't imagine it. You know, we can't just, we just can't imagine all these institutions just going away. You know, Congress, our Congress, our Senate, our police authorities, you know, everything just going away, but it could happen. And it has happened before. Even, in, even when the Soviet Union was overthrown, the Soviet Union in the 90s, I think it was in the early 90s, uh, the Soviet Union was the largest country on the planet at that time. It was so large. And the Soviet Union was overthrown in 89, 90, around there. Uh, and it was its institutions uh, were not strong, the Russian government institutions were not strong enough to take over. And Russian gangs actually took over 
uh, all of Russia and some of the Soviet republics as well for several years. For several years, if you had to travel through through uh, Russia and through those areas, you had to deal with the gangs, the Russian gangs, all different types of gangs that all controlled different territories throughout throughout uh, Russia and the so- and Soviet republics as well. You know, and that went on for years and years, many years, until Russian government was able to reconstitute them and become powerful enough to assert itself again. Um, so that's the sort of thing. That all is the reason why this is being done so slowly. That's why, you know, we have to explain this to the, all the patriots who just have lost, have lost patience and who are just thinking, you know, Q's not real. You know, none of this is real. Nothing's going to get done uh, because... It is. It is going to get done. It is being done. It's such a massive, like you said, it's, yeah, it's so massive and so inter- interconnected and yeah, it's a global, literally a global, global criminal group. Mm-hmm. That's con- exactly. We'll traded everything. Yeah. Almost all governments, <laughs> almost all ma- huge companies like yeah. Uh, yeah. institutions, everything. Right. But especially, in, uh, like, but especially in the United States, they came into direct control of the United States in, I think it was 1917. I think it was 19, or, yeah, I think it was 1917 when the uh, Federal Reserve yeah. was created and the IRS, the mm-hmm. United States IRS at the same time was created because you needed a feeder system to feed into the Federal Reserve to keep it growing and keep it alive. So yeah. that's why the IRS was created to take our value, take our value of our labor and put it over to the uh, Federal Reserve. Even That's how all that, and that's when the cabal, uh, that's how the deep state started that controlled the United States directly. Mm-hmm. And so uh, 1917 to now, that's like over 100 years yeah. of building their power, their grip, their control over us. and. It takes it takes more than three years to undo all that. Yeah, and they've tried yeah. they've tried in the past, and I think they've learned their lesson a couple of times. Learned the hard way in the past, and they realize now they realize what kind of plan they had to come up with, and what was necessary to even have any chance of taking down this infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. Like when JFK found out what was going on. And uh, he was like freaked out about it. And he like, just look at that speech that he made. It's very obvious. That's what he's talking the, about. Where you the secret, to, secret society. Society is the secret oaths. Yeah. He was ready to, to, to just go yeah. after it. And, um, you know, he wanted to <clears throat> reserve and in the CIA and yeah. like all this stuff. Cause he found out what was going on and, right. and how uh, terrible it was. Yeah, and absolutely we saw what happened to him you know yeah, so yeah. it's like you can't just go about this in any kind of way like that it has to be very done very methodically very um well, secretive you, and very and like you, and you bring up a good point well connected to you bring up a good point so many people are like uh why would trump get up there and still support vaccines or why would he support this or support that because if he does say the wrong thing Optics. like that publicly mm-hmm. uh that could mean he could he could suffer the same fate. So it's optics are key. And I see you smiling over there. Obviously, you have <laughs> something to say. Yeah, he's not he's not ready yet to take on the to really take on the pharmaceutical industry. Who basically they have all the money right now. They're they're like a trillion dollar uh, a trillion dollar industry. They have got everybody's money, and they have an entire entire generation of old people hostage in our society and they're not letting go of that and they're not without a fight and trump isn't quite ready to take that on yet but i believe he will he will later on so that i believe that's the reason why yeah i also have seen him say oh yeah vaccines are vaccines are fine vaccines are good and you know and that makes you think you know what's going on with that and i think that's all it is it's just that he's not ready for that particular fight yet i think that's all it is it's simple as that uh but going to your other point though aaron the um the <laughs> thing 
Oh, the thing about the speech I love because I have been, I, I have a, I have a theory here, uh, a working theory that uh, we have had just three presidents that all were not controlled by the cabal mm-hmm. and just three. Just uh, and now, well, now we have a fourth, but, yeah. but at the time we had three and I believe they were Eisenhower, Eisenhower, who and each of these presidents have expressed it through a speech, through a speech, yeah. and he by has- speaking out, by speaking out against the cabal in their own way. And the first one was Eisenhower. And these things should be taught in school when we have, once we have real schools. Yeah, <laughs> once we have real people. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But the first one is Eisenhower, who gave the speech of the, um, uh, what was it? The uh, military industrial complex. Yeah. Beware the military industrial complex speech. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was a tremendous speech where he was crying out for help. And, and people should go listen to that speech and they'll realize that that guy, he was not controlled by the cabal. And the second one, of course, is JFK and the secret society speech that you just talked about, mm-hmm. where he was the most blatant about calling out the cabal, yeah. who they are, you know, men who stand in the shadows and rule by fear and power. And, uh, you know, he just, he laid it all out. And of course, then ultimately they laid him out as well. And the third one, the third one, I believe, was Ronald Reagan. When he, he went to the UN and he gave what we call, what I call the alien force speech. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing, and the media covered it up by saying, oh, he's talking about aliens. He's talking about aliens. He's talking about Soviet Union, things like that. Yeah. And I heard both of those theories when, mm-hmm. on the alien force speech. And, um, and I believe they were both wrong. I believe he was talking about the cabal when he was saying this alien force among us that is here with us now, and they are trying to direct what we do, and we need to fight against them. And I believe he, that's what he was talking about as well. Absolutely. And now, 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. And now we have, um, we have Trump that gave this great, amazing speech in front of uh, Cabal Central, which is the UN. Yeah. And he gave this tremendous speech, and it was basically all about an attack. To re- it was the fulfillment of those other three speeches and those other three presidents. It was all fulfilled. It was all brought together in Trump at the United Nations when he went there and he gave, he gave the uh, speech, uh, the speech that I call globalism is dead. Globalism <laughs> is dead. He went to the UN yes. to, say, to say that globalism is dead. That was the ultimate, the ultimate final fulfillment of those two of those three other speeches where he called out the cabal directly and he called them by their their political flavor globalism and he said it's over it's over guys it's over and uh that was the ultimate thing to do at the ultimate place the u.n yeah in their own house <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly he walked in and told him what's up so- exactly yep so when he said alien force among us, and you, you referred to it as a cabal, that, that could be taken literally as far as there are ETs working within the government. Or maybe even oh, as yeah. a double meaning possibly. Yeah, yeah. Or, or the same meaning. Because, yeah. because according to my research and according to uh, the books, uh, the, uh, according to the investigations that I've done, uh, it looks increasingly like the cabal uh, and a malevolent alien entities could be the same thing working together. Well, yeah, together they are. So that, so that, yeah, yeah. so that you could be. And all you need to do is uh, look at my book, uh, the Extra Dimensionals, uh, for that, uh, and the explanation from top to bottom of exactly how that works and what is involved with that, because yeah. it's all there. It's all there. Yep. And we're essentially totally referring agree. to reptilians. I've, yeah, Draco. Oh, you know, you know. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. yeah. you're on top of it. Well, it, I've, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to say about that, and uh, there's a lot to say that'll make you sound crazy too. Yeah, uh, but oh, we don't want that. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
but I just I, yeah, I know I know yeah, that's what I think we're crazy. yeah I know that's Sorry. what it is the <laughs> reptilian infiltration that, that that's a that's one I know that some people just laugh at when you say and they just yeah. turn their head or like, oh you you listen to too much David Icke or yeah. something yeah <laughs> uh, but when you look into it it's undeniable to be honest uh, I I really think it is and and you've had you've had so many uh, you've investigated so many cases for the government for the FBI you know you've seen it firsthand you know there's smoking gun documents the fbi vault you can go on the yeah. website and even look right. at these documents right so that brings me to my question what do you think do you think there's a benevolent force behind q and the alliance as, as far like as ET. ets yeah you know if that's that's really uh it's difficult to explain, but I'll, I'll answer you, give you the short answer. Yes. Uh, myself, I do believe that. I do believe that there are benevolent, uh, benevolent entities that are working with the Alliance, that are working for our good, for our benefit, and who are probably with the leaders of the Alliance all the time. Because I see so many things, I see so many things happening that are that require supernatural assistance, that require uh, yeah. miracles, miracles to happen. I mean, if you really look at the situation very carefully, uh, you can see, um, you can see, uh, for instance, my, my dear friend, uh, Mike Barra, has done, a, has done a forensic, has done a forensic examination of Trump's activities over the, over the last uh, two years, and he's come up with five assassination attempts, five assassination attempts that are available that people can see happening, can see happening in front of their eyes. And, you know, and I believe it because he actually, he laid it out each instance, he laid them out and he said, look at, this is what happened, watch here. And, and he showed uh, the a couple of them uh, where these uh, these, li these giant limousines come out of nowhere and try to smash the president's car, you know, for no particular reason. And then the person inside doesn't even remember what they did or, or why they did it. It's, uh, you know, things like that. And uh, it's amazing. And, and there's just so many miracles that mm -hmm. keep happening, that keep protecting uh, members of the Alliance, not just Trump, but other members of the Alliance too. And, uh, it's so I do I do believe that as we've seen in the past, there are benevolent uh, alien entities that are working working with this and who have much greater power than uh, than the, the ones on the other side. That's what I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you and we said agree. Yeah. And in the long run, that's 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 why this is even that's why that's why this is even possible right now. I think without without like you said he would have there's five attempts I didn't even know about but there's no way they would have oh nobody knows nobody knows about them because you'd have to just sit down and just do so much research mm -hmm. so much research and so much examination that uh it's it's a lot it's a lot of work that's why uh, that's why we need guys like uh, Mike Barra to do that work for us yeah that's, yeah thanks for sharing that because yes. yeah. I had wondered, I had wondered, like, man, I'm surprised, but there it is. You know, it's already been. Well, they tried to take out Reagan um, back in, like, 81, like, early in his sure. presidency. But they shot someone But else. the guy stumbled right when, and you, we, you could debate whether that was an accident or there was yeah. some kind of intervention yeah, yeah. there. But um, you, And you, the bullet, the bullet missed his heart by, like, an inch. Yeah. Yeah, so that was almost like a yeah, miracle. Yeah, he actually lived, yeah. But also right after that is when it seems like he got kind of spooked by that and realized, oh, I need to, like, watch what I <laughs> yeah. be more careful here, you know? I'm um, sure, yeah. But he did make that speech, like you said. And he, he, in ways like that, he he was willing to kind of, like, put out there oh, yeah. what, what he was. Oh, yeah. What he thought and, was. and, you know, after after he was shot, uh, Reagan was actually more popular than ever because of the sympathy factor. Yeah, yeah. So they actually <laughs> and and the Democrats weren't able to stop anything that he wanted, and he became more powerful than he ever was before. And that was after that that he uh, he was able to overthrow the Soviet Union. 
mm-hmm. with help from Margaret Thatcher, John uh, the Pope at the time, uh, John Paul II, uh, who also was a big anti-communist, and uh, Margaret Thatcher, and, and they just got together. And they, they were able to destroy the Soviet Union. Uh, yeah, and well, and I know he was as far as the ET disclosure part of it. He didn't talk about that anymore. Uh, well, not like he was talking about it to begin with. Yeah, yeah, but I did hear that he they brought a they did a private screening of the movie ET in the White House with Steven Spielberg, and he stood up after the movie and said, "There are people in this room who know that every second of that movie is true." And, yeah. and or something along everything those, you've seen everything here is seen absolutely true is something, like something along those lines and then he walked out but that was like the extent he was willing to go yeah. as far as you know any disclosure because obviously there was an attempt on his life yeah i heard that story too but but also um reagan sometimes was kind of a joker and like he liked to make jokes so people were able to you know just Write it off. Poo poo. Yeah, write off that story by just saying, oh, he's just making a joke. He's just making it's a joke. Every joke. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're getting about at an hour now. Is uh, is there anything else you wanted to touch on before uh, we start wrapping things up? Uh, oh, I just want to I just want to tell people to uh, make sure you get your Q t-shirts. Uh, <laughs> I'm not uh, I'm not selling them, but I am selling a uh, I am selling my books on my on my website, johntamabooks.com, and uh, people can buy my books uh, direct from the author. Uh, I would I would ask them to especially uh, look at Power Investigators, the Power Investigators, which gives a lot of the history behind the cabal and the people who are willing to fight against the cabal, uh, investigators who have special abilities, and also the Extra Dimensionals, which also continues the uh, story of the cabal. And um, and also talks about some of these malevolent alien entities as well. Um, so I would ask people to look at that. And uh, also, I would uh, I also always have to mention that I'll be doing Contact in the Desert, uh, big uh, biggest uh, paranormal conference, consciousness conference in the world uh, at uh, May 29th to June 1st, and uh, that will be that will be Contact in the Desert uh, and. Um, that's going to be a huge, huge event. Uh, I'll be doing uh, experience, oh, Montreal, Quebec in August. I'll be doing 2020 Visions of Tomorrow in Montreal, Quebec, August 14th to the 23rd. And then I'll be doing, uh, in September, Experience 2020 in Florianopolis, uh, Brazil, uh, from September 19th to the 21st. And that should be another huge event where we try to impart knowledge, cutting edge, knowledge always new information guys always has to be new information for people that's very very important i agree yeah. i agree people yeah. go to these conferences they want new information so I, I agree with that definitely and Absolutely. brazil i would love to be able to make it to that uh that would be so cool but uh are you saying something no oh, no, no. I was saying, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming yeah. on yeah. this was thank you so much truly incredible i think we got a lot of uh Juicy. We touched on a lot of yeah. juicy stuff. We definitely did. Uh, and I just can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing your time with us. Thanks, man. Thanks. It's been it's been really great being on here on Journey to Truth podcast with Tyler and A. A. Ron. Good Just stop my name like that from now on. I, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to make it a point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. Good Sweet. night, everybody. Thanks for listening. And thank you for coming on and sharing all that fabulous knowledge. We can't wait yes, to see uh, see what you have coming in the future. And we will see everyone next week. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Bye.